Welcome to Rocket Science 101. This is a series of 12 or so videos on um, beginner to intermediate level concepts in rocket science. Um, this, these series are intended to be structured kind of like a college course, if you will. Um, so that said, I have a syllabus that I made. Uh, I posted it in, well, I haven't posted it in the link yet because I haven't put this video on YouTube yet. But um, if I, if my memory doesn't fail me and I don't forget to do it, there should be a link in the comments section down there. And if it's not there, just comment on the video and say, hey, you forgot to post the link. So, let's go over what's on the syllabus. First of all, my name is Daniel Hastings. I'm currently a sophomore in aerospace engineering at Iowa State University. Ta-da! Um, and, I, well, I guess that's all the introductions you'll need for me. Um, so, there, the rocket science is a rather deep subject, so you'll need some basic knowledge of certain subjects that I have listed as prerequisites, such as trigonometry. It's pretty foundational um, to anything, actually, but uh, especially this field. Um, you'll probably want to know some basic calculus, but don't fret if you don't know it, because I will be going over some of that stuff. Um, and probably basic physics as well. That's a good Thing to have a background in for this subject. Alrighty, um, textbooks. Yes, I have textbooks for you. The first one, Rocket Propulsion Elements by George Sutton and Oscar Biblars. It's currently in its seventh edition. It is very comprehensive and it goes over many rocket topics. Um, we won't go through the whole book in this, but uh, if I end up doing Rocket Science 102, we'll also be using this. Also, for our semester project, we will be doing Model Rocketry. So I suggest you get the Handbook of Model Rocketry by Harry Stein and Bill Stein. It is also in its seventh edition. Um, I've read this book like three times. It's great. In fact, this is how I learned rocket science. I recommend you get that book. Otherwise, like if you want to skip model rocketry and dive right into high power rocketry, I'd encourage you to get this book. Or uh, even if you have any intention at all into getting into high power rocketry. So Modern High Power Rocketry 2 by uh, Mark, somebody, Mark Kinep, Kinep, Kinepa. Um, this is a very good guide on like getting your certification for high power, etc. Um, motors and, and construction and stuff like that. All right, so you don't have to get the textbooks, of course. You don't even have to be watching these videos. You don't have to do anything, but I recommend you do because if you have any interest in in the subject and you want to go somewhere with it get books all right that out of the way grading this is kind of a joke um, but if you want to kind of gauge where you're at I'm going to have some quizzes and a final exam quizzes will be graded at like 25% exam 50% and then the semester project which will be 25% so yeah that's kind of a joke but you can grade yourself alrighty schedule as I said I think there will be 12 videos um, I'm not sure how long they'll be they might have to be broken up into parts if this ends up getting really involved um, but um, 
yeah, it'll range from basic concepts and some some subjects you'll need to know, and then start talking about the like the forces on a rocket in flight, um, and then flight performance trajectory analysis, um, stuff like that. So in this video, we'll be starting with basic definitions, so nothing too complicated. Um, also, at the very end of the syllabus, I have a little blurb, my little spiel. Rocket science is not magical, as I said in the syllabus. It's um, just an applied science um, from basic foundations like chemistry, physics, math, um, you name it. All, all applied towards the goal of flying through space. You know, people have coined the phrase, it doesn't take the, a rocket scientist to know blah blah blah. And I feel like in popular culture, people have associated rocket science as like one of the hardest subjects out there. Whatever. It's not. It doesn't, you don't have to be a straight A 4.0 uh, 36 on your ACT G whiz to uh, be a rocket scientist. Um, you know, it's not like we're building a time machine. <laughs> it's not theoretical physics. So um, if you ha I have any interest at all, I encourage you to pursue it. Who cares what you, how smart you think you are. All right. So that's all the introductions that I will give for this course. And that's all we need to go over. Let's get started. All right. So... What we're going to do today is go over some basic definitions and also basic parts of a rocket. So, definitions, parts of a rocket. So the first thing, obviously, to define would be rocket propulsion. What is it? How does it work? Rocket propulsion is basically a method of producing thrust by ejecting stored matter. This is the most basic definition I could give for rocket propulsion. Under this category, we have several different kinds of rocket propulsion. Um, the most common would be chemical propulsion using properties of chemicals to create a energetic reaction and a ejecting the material that results. So, um, there are actually several categories under this. There is solid, solid propellant, which um, uses uh, combines both the oxidizer and fuel required for the chemical reaction into one solid and it's easy to store that way and easy to ignite and transport and uh, we'll get into some of the pros and cons of each of these types um, then there is liquid propellant which stores the oxidizer and the fuel separately in liquid form and then mixes them together um, in the combustion chamber for the reaction. There is also a hybrid type that combines mm. both solid and liquid technologies. Usually the, the liquid part is the oxidizer and the solid part is the fuel. All right, we also have other types that are much less common. 
electric propulsion and that basically uses electrical properties to accelerate matter, <clears throat> usually ions, I believe. Uh, I'm not an expert in this area, but <laughs> um, there's also, of course, nuclear propulsion. And these are typically, okay, the nuclear propulsion, you, you would use a fission or even fusion reactor to, um, create energy. Uh, not very practical at this point in time. Um, one thing I would like to mention about electric propulsion is that it usually generates extremely low thrust, uh, so it's not practical for leaving Earth's gravitational field. It's only practical for long deep space missions in which it can sustain its thrust. So. Um, these are the basic types of rocket propulsion. Next, I would like to talk about parts of a rocket. So, the basic parts of a rocket should be pretty obvious. We have a nose cone. We have a body tube. We have fins. We have a motor somewhere in there. It could be a solid propellant or liquid propellant or whatever. We have a nozzle. Um, and typically a payload because, you know, you don't, you don't uh, launch a rocket for no reason. It's usually to carry something to an altitude or to orbit or maybe a weapon or something like that. So um, these are the basic parts. Um, I'm going to go over in more detail the specific parts to a solid solid propellant rocket and then chemical, I mean a liquid propellant and finally hybrid. So basically a rocket motor, I mean a, a solid rocket motor has a casing. It has a um, insulator tube which prevents burn through on the casing. It has a forward closure. It has um, propellant grains. There's, there's usually multiple grains that are stacked together and they um, usually have a hole bored through them like so um, to expose more surface area to burn. Um, finally we have the nozzle of course on every rocket motor is a nozzle. Um, so basically also, there are like O-rings and stuff in, in these areas to prevent burn through like, uh, you know, how the, the shuttle Challenger exploded was because of O-ring problems. Um, so these are the basic parts of a solid rocket motor. I'm not forgetting anything, am I? Nope. All right. Let's talk about a, f a liquid fuel engine. We have a tank for the oxidizer. We have a tank for the fuel. Um, we have the combustion chamber and the nozzle. and fuel injectors that squirt the stuff in here, mix it together, and ignite it, and So, that's basically how that works. <laughs> so this stuff should be basic. You probably already know it. Uh, let's... I remembered something else I wanted to mention. Common propellant types. Um, one of the most common is actually 
ammonium perchlorate, which is NH4ClO4. That's the oxidizer, and it's usually combined with rubber. This is called a, a, a composite propellant. These are used in like the space shuttle solid rocket boosters and in most of hobby rocketry. Um, we also have, well, black powder is still used in really small model rocket motors. Um, there's also zinc and sulfur. And actually, sugar and something like potassium nitrate. My battery died for a moment there, but we're back in business. Um, so, propellants for uh, liquid fuel, they're they're typically they're usually Cry cryogens, which means they're super cooled, very cold. Um, the most common you see is typically liquid hydrogen. I mean, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Um, those are very nice because you know they combine. And, and form water, which is very nice. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I won't go over like other types, like, because mainly there's so many of them to choose from and whatever. Anyway, one last thing I'd like to talk about, um, I'd like to talk about hybrid rockets. Basically how these work is you have a casing for a solid fuel and that would be kind of similar to what I showed you before. And we have a nozzle and stuff. Um, the difference being that the oxidizer is in liquid or maybe gaseous form in a tank here and it's injected into here and voila there we go um, benefits of this obviously is that you can control the flow more more precisely you can cut the the power in an emergency you can't do that for um, a solid propellant once you light it it's going you know <laughs> so typically what we see here is um, like some sort of rubber or PVC or something for the fuel. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just has to burn with an oxidizer, which is typically selected to be um, nitrous oxide, laughing gas. That's, that's a very common one you see for hybrid rocketry. So, you now have an overview of basic definitions and classifications of rocketry. Um, in the next tutorial, next lessons, we'll be talking about uh, more advanced things that perhaps involve math and science topics. But I hope you enjoyed this first video, and I hope you stick with these videos and learn a lot.